Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, creativity, and life in a northern town. Feel free to leave comments on the show notes at mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com and let's keep the conversation going online. My name is Vicki and welcome to the podcast. Hello. I just wanted to say February has been so much fun. Are you watching the Olympics? I'm one of these people who thoroughly enjoy every time the Olympics is on. And I really like the winter games. It's been really uplifting and makes me want to go cross country ski. I love watching curling. Um, Curling is something that I grew up watching on the weekends because uh, we live close to Canada and we had Canadian TV a lot on both cable and the aerial. We were able to watch curling. Now, I can't remember always how the scoring is, so I have to ask my husband occasionally. But I really like that they're mic'd up and trying to figure out their strategy. That's been a lot of fun. The other thing I really enjoy is snowboarding because it is so something I would never ever do. It's too scary for me. We have downhill ski um, areas near our house. Never been downhill skiing, but it's fun to watch the snowboarders do all of those amazing tricks and flips and speed. Um, but I want to say I like joy, enjoying the really what we, we would call non-television or obscure sports like biathlon. To be able to ski as many miles as they do and then shoot at a target is just amazing to me. I wouldn't be able to stand up, let alone shoot a target. So biathlon, I spent a good part of my weekend watching all of those races. While I was doing handwork, of course, because, you know, you got to have something to do. So I crocheted a hat for a donation. And today, uh, yesterday, actually, I looked at it and I made a massive error in the first row, which made the hat the wrong size and non-wearable. So I ripped it all out. You know, it's the second thing that I have ripped out or frogged is what um, I've heard people call it. Because earlier this week, I pulled a cowl out that I made out of a nubby yarn. And I never really liked it because it was real squishy and the ends curled up on itself and it was a real tight tube. And well, right in the middle, I dropped the stitch and it was getting a really big hole. And I thought, well, rather than try to fix it, because I never really liked it, I ripped it out also. And I am going to use it in my monthly swatch because I only have one skein and I want to make a wall of swatches. So I've got my second swatch done, a simple basket weave. January was a moss stitch or garter stitch. I can't remember now. And um, I'm just going to keep going through and picking stitches I want to try. Um, inspired by uh, Vicki Howell and her, she did a weekly or daily swatching in January. But hers escalated so fast to beyond my skills like brioche and other stitches that um I just this is just too much for me to try to do so I'm going to pick one or two at a time I'm going to try some of the more challenging ones too and I'm going to put them in embroidery hoops and then hang them up on some of the wall space that I have that would be really cute with the cream um yarn now I have another project I might rip out yet yeah, is a self-striping sock yarn that I knitted into a cowl and it's really too bright. It's red, yellow, and blue and I may frog that back too because a couple of my friends Kristen and Holly Ann are trying to talk me into making a pair of socks. I have never knitted a pair of socks. My aunt is a fabulous knitter and she sends socks quite often. So I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I'm I'm not sure. Socks scare me a little bit. I know I could do it. It's just a matter of being um, attentive and present when I turn that heel. So those are some of the fun things I've been doing. I've also been working on my mini. I'm doing a mini a month. And January that bled over into February was my half square triangle mini 
by uh, it's a cherry wood fabric. It's just a big half square triangle, no pattern. I just made it up. This month, my mini is a little tiny three and a half inch eight pointed paper pieced star. And I'm going to set it with a bunch of the leftover cherry wood scraps that are right around three and a half inches. So that I'm playing with the layout on that. And I got thinking that um, doing a paper piecing demonstration on Facebook Live next week might be a fun thing to do. So that's continued to inspire me in my quest for trying to find a way to do a PDF. So I figured out how to do a PDF for this particular pattern. And if you would like to have an opportunity to download the eight pointed star on a small paper piecing pattern in a PDF file, I'm going to ask um, everyone to sign up for my newsletter. Um, we have had a couple of freebies with my newsletter and you can find a newsletter sign up on my website. So when you go to show notes, I will include a link, but there's a lot of benefits for being part of my biweekly newsletter. I talk about what I'm doing, uh, where I'll be going, classes I'll be teaching. You may read those, some of that stuff's boring. But then there's also things like um, opportunities to have some promotional items. And currently, if you're a newsletter subscriber, you can have a link because you're a newsletter subscriber to the PDF files of my New Beginnings mystery quilt. And we have quite a few people who are uh, signed up and taking advantage of that. I hope to keep um, putting things that are promotional items that are very helpful for my subscribers. And really, it was my way of saying thank you for being a subscriber. And thank you for being part of our community. I've really been working on the community part of quilting since the first of the year. I've had the most fun teaching a beginning quilters class at the quilt shop. We have a couple more weeks of that. And then in March, it is, I'm teaching a class on improv piecing. It's an intro class. I also have a community on Facebook, and I really wanted to talk about getting involved and being part of other, you know, a group of other people and finding this tribe of people who are just as mad about quilting as you are. And one of the places where I have found a great group of people is my Facebook group. I have a Facebook page called Vicki Holloway Quilting and then I decided that it would be a lot of fun to do something with creativity. It's mostly quilters, but my sister is a painter and there are other people there who do other types of crafts too. Um, you can meet my mom on the group also, as well as a lot of my closest quilting friends, both people I know in real life and some of my closest friends in the um, digital world. What do we do on the group? Well, I do a daily prompt challenge. So at, pinned at the top of the page is a thinking or a action 15 minute exercise. And we post about that. Now, not everybody posts every day. Sometimes it's a show and tell. Um, sometimes I asked a question this week, prints or solids? Um, hearts, yes or no. It gets the brain thinking. And I want to say these kinds of exercises are very helpful for me in jumpstarting my creativity. I really enjoy seeing what everyone is working on. I have the people who are doing the mystery quilt. A few of them are posting in the group, uh, sharing how their blocks are coming along and asking questions and I think it's just great that we're all so supportive of each other. And I would invite you to look for the My Creative Corner 3 Facebook group. Um, you have to ask to be in. This is a closed group, but it has been a lot of fun. In fact, you know, I have found it so inspiring that last year, because of a daily prompt challenge, um, we worked for the entire month. I believe it was February a year ago where we were doing 
different creative prompts that led us up to the end of the month of creating a block. And I did a block and I submitted the idea to Moda's Bake Shop. And it was featured last August, all because of engaging in the community. I get ideas from other people. I get ideas mostly when I'm talking to other people about quilting. Does that make sense? Because that happened again this week. And I thought I would share the little story about it. I've been working on uh, Facebook Lives. And if you've watched a couple that I've done, I'm trying to do it in conjunction with a few things for the New Beginnings mystery quilt. But also I thought I would just keep going with it. We talked about a quilting plan a week ago, uh, did a demo on how to do half square triangles, things like that. But this week I auditioned fabrics because one of the daily prompt challenges was, do you have novelty prints? And I was shocked. I went through all of my bins and couldn't find any. Well, then I remembered I made a couple of quilts for Quilts for Cure and donation and it, it wiped out all of the novelty prints that I had. This mushroomed into me digging through my stash and realizing that my room would be more tidy. It's not my sewing area, it's my creative area and cutting and storage. I sew and I podcast from my kitchen table, which this room is right off the dining room. It's overflowing with projects on horizontal surfaces. So I decided oh, there are so many one inch strips, two inch strips, fabrics that are 10 years old or older, things that I can't bear to look at anymore. So I went through three quarters of the bins that I had, which is in a small Ikea storage bookcase type of thing with sliding baskets. And I threw out all the little pieces that were no good to anybody. I sorted out some things to give to a charity group that does sewing for Quilts of Valor and for um, children. And then I decided to go through all of that to get back around to the paper piecing, to get back around to, oh, the novelty prints. I, I lost my train of thought there, people. I'm really sorry. That's something else I want to talk about. So the novelty prints, I found a bundle of four that I bought in Scotland. This is the only trip that I've ever taken outside of the country. So I want to tell you a little bit about that trip as we get back to circling around to this novelty print. You know, Scotland was the honeymoon we never took. Um, in fact, this is the week that I will have been married 32 years to the man who's been the love of my life and we met in 1979 in middle school sat next to each other in many many classes and he played tuba I played an upright string bass and you're thinking why did you play bass in a band well I started out learning on violin and then I went to band and tried to play flute but all of my asthma and allergies which occasionally you hear on this program really I knew was limiting me even in the sixth and seventh grade that I couldn't play it well I loved playing the flute but our band at that time I lived in a very small rural town had no bass no tuba and in the corner was an upright bass that nobody played. I knew how to play violin and I thought it's just a big violin. I can teach myself how to do that. And the band instructor said, sure. Well, then we moved up to the school where I met my husband, which is three hours north. And the band instructor in the corner had a bass that nobody played. But we had a tuba section, but we also had a jazz band and other things. And he said, sure, if you know how to play it, have at it. So that's the story of how I met my husband. We sat in band next to each other and teased each other and thought we were both kind of nerds. And then eventually, after we graduated from high school, thought we were maybe compatible. And that's the story of how I met my husband <laughs> in the eighth grade in band. But remember, I taught myself how to play bass. Fast forward that to quilting. 
I applied those lessons on learning, reading, teaching, and I really did take a few classes, but modern quilting, I taught myself how to do. Okay, so back to the whole Scotland. We got married very young and had, you know, our children in our 20s. And, you know, taking big trips, you know, out of the country were not in our budget nor time. And we did take a lot of family vacations, you know, when we could afford them. Not every year, but we did take quite a few. So when the children all grew up and our youngest went to college, my husband does Highland Games. And there was an opportunity for him to participate in his age group over in Inverness, Scotland. And we thought, we're going because what are the chances that you'll be able to compete again? Because as you get older, you know, your risk for hurting yourself or not being able to do this sport is high. So we went and it was the honeymoon we never had. And when we were in Inverness, um, we, we went to several cities, but I was so impressed that everywhere we went were castles. And Scotland is just, it was magical. It was everything that um, you ever could think. The travel logs, you know, talked about, but it was better. And the weather was perfect. It never rained until the last two days when we were there. It was sunny and 70 the whole time. That's why I thought it was completely magical. The last day in Inverness, I told my husband, we got to find a local quilt shop because I want to see what they have. And I found this pre-cut pack of castles. And it also had little birds and it had a coordinating fabric and then it had a print. But I bought it because of the castles and the, um, there were old wooden ships. They're not pirate ships, but they're ships from hundred and some years ago on this print. I brought it home and realized it's a color palette I do not have anything of. It's a peach and a beige and a, it's not really gray, but it's not really brown. And I didn't know what to do with it because I wanted it to be something magical that reminded me of this trip. So here we are four years later. And we were talking about auditioning fabrics. And the novelty print prompt challenge made me think, you know what, this is a great topic for a Facebook Live. So I posted it and you can still watch it on uh, Facebook, which is under my Vicki Holloway quilting page or on my YouTube channel. But I will say uh, I was disappointed on the YouTube version when you make it well it's probably Facebook too when you, if you put it on a big screen like a television it's a little bit grainy but if you keep it on a computer or a tablet the the picture quality is pretty good so I went through and pulled a whole bunch of strange fabrics from my stash because I have some nice fabrics and I didn't want to buy things specifically for this project if I had things at home. And besides, I don't know what I was looking for. So as I auditioned, I found a bundle that I bought specifically to go with this. And you'll find out in the video whether it worked or not. Well, let me give you a hint. It didn't. And you'll see why. And then I went through and found these other bundles that I thought were too formal and fussy. And it worked. So as I'm going through all of this, I still didn't know what I wanted to make. And as I chatted with the one person who was watching Facebook Live with me, Glenna, thank you, Glenna, for joining me. We had fun. I started brainstorming out loud with her what to make. You know, did I want to frame these little fussy cuts in, you know, little strips and sashing or put them in the middle of a star? And I said, you know, what I really wanted to have not lost is the integrity of the pattern and I wanted it to not be childlike because there are parts of it that could be childlike and baby. I wanted the castles and the ships and all of those things to remind me of this trip to Scotland and what I said out loud was the word it was a magical trip and then that triggered a lot of connections in my brain about the trip. What's magical? What is all about Scotland? Um, and I realized fairies 
is something that made me think of Scotland. I love fairy gardens and I love magic and I love the stories and legends. And I realized somehow or another, I need to make this quilt into a fairy garden. Now I have a quilt before that I made with mushrooms and trees and unicorns that remind me of a fairy garden. And I think this is going to be a second version in this peach taupe and beige white color palette with tiny splashes of blue. Check the Facebook live out. I'll put a link in the show notes for you to check it out. But that's how I got inspired. It was talking with other quilters in my talking and in my brainstorming through all of this chatting, you got to hear about how I got inspired. And inspiration and creativity are daily, daily exercises that I engage in to make it better. Just like long arm quilting and free motion quilting, if you don't do it every day, then you try to do it and force it, then it becomes rusty and you get frustrated. So join the group. We have a lot of fun. My Creative Corner 3 Facebook group, we do the daily prompt challenges. If you go to my webpage, you can find information about all of this, or you can feel free to leave me a comment if you have questions or want to know how to find a place because you can't find it through the show notes. And I want to end our chat today talking about today's sponsor, which is Angela Walters of Quilting is My Therapy. Now I'm going to just say Angela Walters is one of my quilting uh, heroes. I'm a big fan, fan girl of her work. And she sponsored today's episode with her new ruler set. There's Archie and Shorty and Slim and Squiggy. And of this set, I have used Archie and Shorty. And I have a couple videos that I'll put in the show notes to show you how easy they are to work. Now Angela has you know, professionally done ruler tutorials on these things and check them out. They are perfect. Creative Grids is the the maker of the rulers. They are engineered with non-slipping discs that are already in the back that don't obscure what you're quilting. You can use it on a long arm or a domestic sewing machine and they are perfect for the size of your hand. It's not a big clunky ruler that got in my way. It was it was wonderful to work with. And within two or three minutes, I felt like I could do it. I used it on my long arm and I found it great. I've had trouble with big clunky rulers and I've had trouble with them slipping and this did not. So I can highly recommend that you check out the new ruler set because they are the bomb. I love them. They're easy to use. And Creative Grids is actually my favorite ruler. I'm going to give a little shout out to them. If you have never tried one, go find a little Creative Grids ruler and you will see the difference. You can see your work and your cutting is more accurate. So I want to say thank you to Angela of Quilting is My Therapy. Also this month we are doing a blog hop of me and Kristen and Quil- Quilting Jenny of Angela's new book called Free Motion Meandering. And for four weeks, we're each taking on two of the stitches that Angela talks about in her book. Check it out. The book is awesome. It's great on meanders and why meanders. And I think they just let the patchwork sing. Custom quilting is awesome, but meanders is really the texture that makes a quilt lovely. I want to say thank you everyone for coming to the podcast and listening and for supporting me. I appreciate all those who have signed up for the patron um, link on Podbean to help keep the cost of this podcast down for me. I also thank those who have used the PayPal button for one-time donations to help with supporting me and the podcast. Please leave a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast to help other people find us. It's reviews that really help help me out a lot. And please don't forget, sign up for the newsletter. Maybe there'll be a freebie that you really enjoy. 
and it will also help you keep up with all the things that I'm up to. Don't worry, I don't spam you with excessive amounts of newsletters and your information is kept safe through MailChimp. So please sign up for the newsletter. And I will be back to talk to you in two weeks. Thank you and quilt on everyone.